Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 13. For you have heard of my former conversations, my former conversation in time past. This was not talk. This was not discourse. This was more about his character. More about his lifestyle. Pastor Okwe, come and sit here. Come to the front. I sense this night to be a strong meeting. So all the pastors should be front. I sense that there will be an impartation at some point. Ah, me and you were the same thing. With your signature. Come and sit where Pastor Victor is. We celebrate you, man of God. Your testimony is our prayer point. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when people come, just fill up that space. Okay. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Now, no one can waste the church. His intention was to waste the church. Um, that's why Apostle Papa will always say that the Lord accosted him and said, why are you kicking against the barbed wire? Because no one can fight against the kingdom of God. I don't know if you heard yesterday when Reverend was teaching. He said, you are not what? Are you afraid? Pastor Abe, no holds back today. Leave that, leave that internet. Let everybody enjoy themselves. Because the painful part now is that we were told that what you muted is not available anywhere. Media, you guys, I will suspend all of you. Sound. Do you have the recorded one? God don't, God don't save you now. I was going to suspend you for six weeks. Six. You won't have sound. No, that's a lie. We will import people and... Why won't you have... Nobody can hold God by the jugular. Nobody. No one. Not even me, the pastor here. Nobody. Nobody. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if you think if we take them out, we'll be stranded, you lie. Praise the Lord. So Reverend Gideon, that's the good news. We have it recorded. So for today, please let there be a free flow of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Because sometimes, some of us don't even know that when somebody is speaking... He's not intending to say some of the things he says. Right? When he drops, may, maybe Misha, when I go into those things and I sit down, I begin to look that, ah, maybe somebody will punch me from back or somebody's just going to come after me or something. Don't think when we, are in, when we come down, we are that. The boldness comes as a result of the grace that is available. If you have me, say Amen. So for ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jewish religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. Somebody say traditions of my father. So he was, he was more zealous of the traditions of his father. All right, verse 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his what? His son in me, that I may what? Preach him among the heathen. Immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. 17. Neither went, okay, leave it at 16. Let's leave it at 16. So when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb? But before we arrived here, you saw the credentials of this guy, right? We saw all his credentials. Now, I'm not going to teach. Trust me. I just wanted to point something to you. That um, where we were looking at in the last couple of days 
are the epistles of Paul. And Rev said to us yesterday while he was teaching that the foundation, the, 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 the foundation of our Christian faith or the foundation that the apostles push can only be built through what? Through what? Through the preaching of what? Christ. That preaching of Christ was what caught my attention yesterday. And that this man that is preaching this Christ, something needed to happen to him as well before he will or he would preach the Christ. And he was looking as though this guy was set on his own path. Maybe before you came in for this conference, maybe you're listening to me online, you were set on your own path. This guy is an expert. I don't want to go into all his credentials. I would have walked you through the credentials. But like I said, I just want to give a little bit of summary. All right? I would have walked you through the, through the credentials of Paul and how we arrived here. Because when you see a man who says that the laying on of the foundation of the apostles and Jesus being that foundation, all right? And then you are here hearing us talking about the preaching and the teaching of the word of God. And then this guy says to you that this is how we lay the foundation. This is how we come to the place where we can say that Christ is being formed in us. The formation of Christ in us happens as a result of the preaching and the teaching of the minister that is called into that work. One that lays the block upon block. But there was a particular character that he was living with at that time. And that character was that he was a zealot. Somebody said a zealot. This guy believed that killing Christians was doing favor to the God of heaven. Not just to the Jewish community. He believed that annihilating the believer. Men who profess Christianity. By killing them he was up to date with the God of his fathers and he was also bringing pride and joy and regard to the community of the Jewish people Paul was so connected Paul had men of influence behind him matter of fact when they were going to kill Stephen the Bible said that the people kept their clothes at the feet of one young man called who? Saul he was that influential. He didn't need to raise the stones, but he was sitting and standing there when they were carrying out that operation. He said, ye have heard of my former conversation. It, it, it therefore means that it is possible, it is plausible for you and I to have started on a wrong tangent and begin to come back to where God wants us to be. Maybe before you gave your life to Christ, and maybe currently you are in Christ and you are a minister of the gospel and uh, somehow, somewhere your focus shifted. You can behave like Paul. And that's why I said to us that once the foundation is Christ, the foundation cannot be faulty. Once the foundation is Christ, the foundation cannot be faulty. That's why Paul said we must take heed what we build on it. So if you discover that the foundation is faulty, it means that Christ was never there in the first place. So what do we do to such foundation? We destroy it. We're about to pull down a facility, a building here now. It's a standing building. But because it's not befitting for what we want to do, it's not befitting for what we want to achieve, we cannot remodify that one. What we need to do now is to what? Drop it down. Because we are going four floors up. If we are going four floors up, the foundation cannot carry the building. So what you do is you bring it down. What you do to such foundation that has no Christ in it is to pull it down. Somebody shout it to pull it down. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Maybe like Paul who wanted to annihilate the church. Maybe like Paul who derived joy in killing men. 
I hope you know that in the days of Paul, Paul was not going after members of the body. He was going after the arrowheads. That's the assignment of Herod. Herod does not come after deacon. Herod does not come after elder. Herod comes after arrowheads. Pharaoh does not come after arrowhead. Pharaoh comes after the entire people to bring them into bondage. That's why I know my calling. So, when you look at his formal conversation, for God to take him out of that kind of lifestyle, he said, it pleased God. In other words, every one of us have an assignment from eternity. We all have an assignment from what? Eternity. From where? Eternity. So God Almighty said, look, this is not the assignment. And of course, Acts of Apostles, um, chapter 9, 10, tells us of that journey. Right? And he said, and I was, um, give me verse, give me, take me back to Galatians chapter 1, verse 13. Verse 13. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion. So this guy was a religious guy. He was a religious guy. He, he's a lover of, he's a philosopher. He is an expert. He trained under Gamaliel. He was a gifted guy. He was a speaker. And on it, he had backup from the leaders. Do whatever you want to do. So he persecuted the church, maimed the people, and then give me 15. Give me verse 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. This is always the dividing line. There must, help me tell you on your board, there must be a separation. There must, there has to be a separation. It's always, there must be a dividing line. You can't walk between crooked lines. There has to be a dividing line. You, 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 Uncle Toby, help me step on the keyboard. You see, there are some of you who came in this night. I perceive in my spirit that there are two persons here who came in this night and what you are looking for is an impartation. What you are looking for is an extension of grace to you. That, oh, how I wish I can have entrance into scriptures like this. The way this man called Gideon teaches, Lord, can you just give me entrance? I, I see the Lord applying the eye self tonight oh my god hmm. i i see the lord applying i serve tonight okay i i see i see somebody online with infirmity on your body for over 14 years please mark my word for over 14 years and jesus is set to heal you tonight Jesus is said to heal that infirmity tonight. Hallelujah. There's, there's, there's a lady that I see in my spirit who is having issues with your disc. Your disc. Um, uh, this, this, this side of your back. The disc from here down to this from here. I see Jesus touching that place tonight. You would, you would notice that that pain will just not subside. It will just disappear. The, the Holy Spirit will, will walk on your body tonight. I mean, before the end of the meeting, that pain will be gone. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Next verse. To reveal his son in me. All right? You are not permitted to preach Christ until Christ is revealed in you. The intention of the preaching of the gospel is not to reveal Christ to you. Is to reveal Christ in you. The working of the apostle is to assure that his speakings begin to form Christ. In what? In you. My little children, in whom I once travail again until Christ be formed. What? 
in. So the operation, the reason why Paul is able to use the metaphor of building, the metaphor of a Greek to draw a narrative to us is because he's been there. All right? He's been there. He was a recipient of the gospel. He was one that sat with the Lord. And uh, the finished work of the Lord on the life of Paul was not for him to go preach first. Exactly what we were looking at in Mark chapter 3 was what happened to this man as well. You will not be able to preach the gospel of Jesus in its glory. In its entirety. In its glory. If he's not revealed in you. So when it pleased God, he separated him from his mother's womb and he called him by his grace. He chose him. When he chose him, the next thing he was going to do was to do an operation inside of him. Can you place your hand on your right, on your chest and say, Lord, reveal yourself in me. Reveal yourself in me. Your message travels far when God does his fine work in your life. So you see, you see that before this guy began killing people, his true DNA was to go and reveal Christ in people. What's your true D DNA? You know, my destiny was to travel and preach the word of God. But I started as a complete it. I started, as, I started as a terrible young man. But the day came when God said, no, I won't allow you to continue like this. My prayer today is may the Lord intercept a young man here. Amen. That amen is bankrupt. Amen. May the Lord intercept a young man here. Amen. That God will come into your life. He will sit with you. He will teach you. He will express and open his heart to you. To the end that you become strong in him and then through you he will preach. He will, he will, he will, he will speak through your vocal cord. Are you with me? So to reveal his son in me that I may preach him among what? The hidden. Immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. There are revelations that flesh and blood can reveal. There are revelations that you will come into by divine relationships. But there are things in the midst of all of that that must be handed over to you. So he did not confer with flesh and blood. But my point today is the preaching of that word must be centered on Christ. Must be centered on Christ. And the only way we are going to achieve that is not just for us to sit down and to read books and to take notes and to say that when I go, this is how I'm going to speak. This work must be finished in us. The finished work of Christ must find deep, deep expression in our soul. Deep expression in our spirit. Must find hmm, inroads into everything that we do. Our handles must change and improve. Colossians chapter 1 as I Give me 123. For this cause we also since if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not give me this in amplified please. And this he will do provided that you, provided that you continue to stay with and in the faith in Christ. In who? In Christ well grounded and settled and steadfast not shifting or moving away from the hope which rests on and is inspired by the glad tidings what's the glad tidings the good news what's the gospel 
which you heard and which you have been and which has been preached and been des designed for and offered without restriction to every person under heaven of which gospel I Paul became a minister next verse even now I rejoice in the midst of my word suffering so this gospel didn't just bring affluence this gospel also brought what suffering and he said I do what I do rejoice in this suffering in the midst of my sufferings on your behalf and in my own person I am making up whatever I am making up whatever is still lacking and remains to be completed on our part of what Christ's affliction for the sake of his body which is the church let's go on in it I became a minister in accordance with divine what stewardship which was entrusted to me for you as its object and for your benefit to make the word of God fully known among you let's go on the mystery which was hidden for ages and generations from angels and men but is now revealed to his holy people the saints mm -hmm. to whom God was pleased to make known how great for what the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of his mystery which is what and among you the hope of what I decided to bring it to amplified all right there is a mystery he said when the Bible talks about Christ in you it's what that's a mystery when God begins to when 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 Jesus begins to weave that work and that's why you see you cannot attain into that place where we come into the inner workings of Jesus without suffering you will There, are, there, are, there, 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 there is a promotion that will come to your life. You have long desired promotion. And then the promotion comes. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You desire that promotion. Then the promotion comes. Then you now become, ah, ah, how do I navigate this water? It's as if the promotion is not an affliction. But you waited for that promotion long and you had your plans that if that promotion comes, this is how I'm going to conduct myself. Only for you, Reverend Gideon is smiling, he knows what I'm talking about. Only for you to get to that season and suddenly realize that you need wisdom. But you will have to, it's part of the suffering you will embrace. The operations of Christ in us will give birth to some certain things that are not so sweet and interesting. And Paul said, it's a mystery. So when you see the Gentile church and you see the Jewish church, um, do I even have ground for comparison now? You will, you, will, you will just know that the labors of this man called Paul that we are attacking, some of us have not even scratched one city. And he labored. And that labor is to ensure that that same mystery that was factored into his spirit was what he was going to be doing. Which is what? Christ in me. The first time he said when Christ was revealed in him to the end that he may preach. By the time he pressed further he said no it's beyond preaching. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. It is not Christ in you, the hope of cars. It is not Christ in you, the ground for negotiating big houses. I remember when my mother died. I said, Lord, can you just bring her back so that everybody will know that you are God? And he said to me, whether she's back or not, I'm God. If she's back or not, son, I'm God. You are the one that need to know that I am God if she comes back. But me, 
coming back or not, I am God. That settled it. Because I locked myself for three days. I didn't go out. I was praying. I knew battles were ahead of me. And he said, I am God. Get ready tonight for a mighty rush of his presence and power. Get ready. We must return to the gospel of Jesus. So when you heard that the apostolic office is foundational, was anything, anything look like foundational yesterday? Respond to me. Eh? You are not answering now. Because when you keep, when, when we start that building, you will now begin to realize that it is not complex. <laughs> eh? It is not complex. It is not simple. It is mystery. And that's why we need, that's why we need teachers that can break these things down. Yesterday, the reason why we had so many digressions was because we were not catching the concept. So he needed to, we need to keep digressing. And when I sat down, I said, Lord, help the church. Help the church. Concepts of, like, like when Rev was saying yesterday that you are not the church. I could hear inside of us, eh, the religious spirit just say, uh-uh. Did you just stand like this? But the moment he said, uh, you are a member, you settle down a little bit. Because, because you, you now, I say, ah, yes, so, ah, he be like, say this thing, when this man, they talk, not true. So he said to you that, these things are not that deep. He was not being humble. He was just telling you the truth. That it is deep, because you, what you are looking for is that, you know, we are all looking for mysteries. If Reverend Gideon was teaching yesterday, he said, mystery number one, I can bet you the way you will sit down. You will, sit, you will not put your back on the chair. You are looking for the mystery too because the moment you live here, you go and preach it. <laughs> you go and preach those things. And you are not waiting for those things to, to find roots in your heart. So if you are a pastor, if you are a minister of the gospel, I want to plead that we go back. I want to beg of you, all of us. We see. In fact, if you are a pastor now, since you refuse to study, I want to beg you, study for the sake of the people. If you, you don't want to study, but study for the sake of the brethren so that we can be grounded. Look at the way falsehood is flying. And people are buying into it. We don't have elders in the heavens. All kinds of concepts that are coming. I want you to bow your head and talk to Jesus. Just help me talk to God. And if you are feeling sleepy, it's too early in the day. Fasting don't finish. Today is the 69th day. So if you are feeling sleepy, go outside and sleep. And there's, there's a big hole there. Go and lie down on the floor there and come back. Because it's a long night. It's 1 hour 45 minutes. Or 1 hour 15 minutes. Eh? Or like I said, I should not obstruct the man. I said, okay. Oh. So get, get ready. It's 1 hour 40 minutes. Whichever way Reverend wants to. That's the minimum. If he wants to go above that. But I want you to bow your head and pray in the Holy Ghost. We need your help. She you see, say, we need your help. You need your help.
Say you see, say, only love. 